Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is August 16th, 2020. This video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. Also, if you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe to my channel and um, check me out on Twitter at AlphaCharts365, uh, where I post charts and um, different ideas. All right, so let's start off with the SPX and um, out there. Okay, so for me, the way I'm looking at this is that the move is complete. You know, we had the big dip, we had the big recovery, now we're back basically at all time highs and the move is now complete. So what does that mean? So to me, that means now we're going to wait and see what the next move is. Um, I don't need to rush in and front run the move because I don't know if we're going to move sideways, move up or move down. Um, I would love to see maybe a little bit of a retracement here, you know, something that you know, just a little quick shake out or something like that before we move higher obviously this was a gigantic move up you're looking at a 55 percent move to the upside so um over a very short period of time so that was a you know obviously huge and you know that followed the 35 you know percent move to the downside so anyway i think that there um the next move is not you know the direction of which is not guaranteed. And so uh, so we're going to wait. Now, S&P, SPX is at basically all-time highs. But let's look at the RSP. Right? So the RSP, which is the equal weight SPX, you can see is really still, I don't know, let's see, roughly, you know, 6%, 7% under its highs. So, um Definitely the market's being carried by some of the big caps and um, names. That's okay, right? That's not terrible. But uh, but you see the equal weight index is still under the highs. Looking at the Qs. So the Qs are, you know, looking real good. They are making all-time highs up here, trending above both tra um, moving averages, and uh, everything's looking good. This is the trend line that I think is going to matter. Um, it has mattered since May, and it's been respected. So if we move sideways into it or break down below it, um, that would be you know that would be something a change of character. We'll put it that way. That would be a change of character, and you know we're about twelve and a half percent from the breakout. And is that possible? Sure, it's a possibility. Um, if we if we break this 12 12 and a half percent and would that be normal probably that doesn't have to go all the way back there maybe it gets only to 250 ish right and and people are going to wait for it to get all the way back here because they're trying to you know figure out exactly you know when to jump in um and it may not get all the way back here in a strong market it won't right so 250 ish that's probably if we break down from here a little bit or we'll shake out from here that's where I would I would look for it. And then people maybe start talking about you know some kind of head and shoulders pattern or something like that. Um, I'm not into, into that right now. I think that um, right now the trend line is intact. So again, a breakdown below this trend line and a hold that would be a that would be a change of character. All right, IWM back to this area which has been resistance multiple times in the past. You know, I could actually extend this line all the way out to here, right? Just tons of times. So it's acting like a little resistance right now. So we'll have to find out, are we in a choppy area right here where it's going to kind of chop around before it can move higher or, or does it just go sideways here? Um, we will find that out. That's the IWM. So let's look at the XLF next. And um, not a ton of progress this week, right? Uh, kind of gapped up then gave back. And it's, um, you know, just kind of consolidating, kind of flagging. 
potential lower high here, so we do have to be aware of that. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. When we look at the XLF versus SPX, now this was something I showed last week. And we'll do that, and then we're gonna just add in the RSI here. And so I talked about, uh, you know, we have this momentum divergence right here, right? You know, you could probably even do something like this if you really wanted to, right? So big momentum divergence, however you want to draw this line here. Um, so we're starting to carve out a bottom potentially in the relative strength again, relative strength. Oops, I don't push the wrong button. Um, right, so relative strength chart. So maybe we are starting to see a bottom and XLF over time can start to outperform. Why is this area important? It was the 2009 lows. So this is a place for a reversal to take place, right? This is a, it would make sense. So uh, we are showing it. And I, again, I don't want to front run it, um, but I am watching this. You know, if we can hold above here and if the XLF can start to really start to move, you know, that would be a different story. You know, I think it's a good chance we can get back up at least, you know, 20 more percent to the, to the upside. That would make sense to me as long as we stay above, you know, this AV wrap and um, from the tops and the bottom. And, uh, and we start to kind of keep trending in the right direction. All right. Um, next up is SMH. Semiconductors looks just like the Qs. Get rid of this um, looks just like the Qs. Again, if we roll over here, uh, I don't think, um, I think it's a change of character. And I wouldn't be shocked to see us, you know, it's 10.5% there. You know, that would not be crazy for a retest here before we move higher. Um, and I'm not bearish. You know, I just think that that we've moved pretty far and, and you know, a, a little bit of give back and retracement would, would be fine, healthy, it'll shake out, get people, get other folks very bearish. That would be fine with me. Uh, lumber, still in a strong uptrend from the bottom. You know, coming back up to this special area right here, right around 67, 67 and a half, somewhere around there. Um, so we'll see what happens if and when it gets to there. But again, it's straight up uptrend. So lumber is, to, is not giving any signs of anything. SPX TLT, you know, came off the bottom, came across. SPX outperforming TLT, bullish sign, uh, looking good there. What else we got? Let's look at TLT by itself, though. So one thing that, that I did talk about last week also were interest rates a little bit. And, you know, there was this gigantic momentum divergence right here, uh, bearish, right here as it's trying to make highs. Now, is this making some kind of double or even potentially triple top area? Maybe, right? I think you know, it would have to break 156 to confirm that. Um, but there's definitely a divergence here. So it looks like you know the 20-year is starting to get tired up here, and interest rates may be starting to you know, are you know kind of bouncing back a little bit. We'll see if this continues. But this you know you know if this is some kind of double or triple top and we we break back below you know 148 um i'm not sure if that's uh, going to be a, a very good environment for trading stocks but we'll see we'll see if that happens um we're not there yet looking at the 10 year and again you're going to see this is rates now 10 year rates and again there's that momentum divergence that we were looking at and rates shot up at this past week so um i think it's a big deal it's a big increase in rates you're talking about 
38% increase in rates. Again, they're still low, don't get me wrong, but still a pretty big increase. So we'll see if that continues. Um, but I think rates shooting up would be uh, something to watch, right? And then just to round this out, let's look at high yield. And high yield came in a little bit this week, um, as expected, right? When I, and when I say as expected, I mean, you've seen all the other rates uh, going up, so bonds are going down. Um, looking at IEI versus HYG for credit spreads. And, uh, you know, we got to this area and kind of bounced. So we're still in the lower highs and lower lows camp, even though this wasn't really a lower low here. So that could be a change of character. Let's see if the lower high sticks. So that's definitely something to watch in the um, credit spreads. If credit spreads start to widen here, that would definitely be something to take note of. Looking at the VIX, still trending down, um, making lower highs, lower lows, back below this 24 and a half, 25 ish area. Um, so I think that just shows that we're in a, a more trending market. Um, even if we did get a spike, you know, this is the high, major high, high. As long as, you know, we don't get above this high, I think that um, we're still in a bullish scenario. Longer term. Um, let's look at the put call ratio now. Put call ratio. All right. So this is is really clustering up into this area of, you know, um, bullish side of, of the boat. Um, we've had some, you know, some pretty good numbers here. And it could stay in this area for a while, you know, just like it did over here for a while. You know, these are some really big clusters, really close together. Um, you, know, you saw kind of here in 2015, you know, so that's actually kind of similar to it. Uh, going back and here's 09 something very similar to it too so again not saying that we're gonna have an 09 event right um, but I wouldn't be shocked if something happens we're at the spot we're pretty close to it if not there in the next couple weeks we're at a spot where and also seasonally we're at a spot so seasonally we're at a spot within the price range we're at a spot um, so I wouldn't be shocked to see some event that gives that it creates that shakeout that thinks, you know, that this is, you know, 2009 again or some craziness. So that would be what I'm looking for here. It hasn't quite happened yet and it may not happen. We could go um, further, you know, just kind of chopping in this area or, or not even get this, this big spike, but I would love to see something like this. You see, it doesn't happen too often. You know, a big spike like that gets everyone bearish all to one side of the boat. That would be uh, wonderful. You know, that one and a half percent or greater. Uh, so that's what I'm looking for in put call. Again, don't know what happens this week, next week, or ever. But again, clustering like this tends to push things to the other side. And you see, people are even more bear, uh, more bullish than they were back in, in 19 going to 20. I mean, the boat's pretty much, you know, moved to one side. So definitely something I'm watching here. And the last chart we're gonna look at today is the Value Line Geometric Index. Again, not quite making new highs yet like the S&P is, or, or um, you know, right there, or QQQ. So it just shows you that, you know, there's maybe a little bit of a divergence. Maybe we're a little heavy in um, maybe we're just a little heavy in the mega caps and let me um, switch here. And if you look at the heat map, you know, it's, um, this was Friday's heat map and just kind of like, meh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, not really going anywhere. There's no real traction. Um, you know, industrials kind of looked okay. That's one day. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, it's definitely a market that is at potential inflection point. 
right? SPX. QQQ is, is again, looking the best. Um, potential inflection point coming up over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're coming, you know, coming into Labor Day, you know, that end of August, September area. That's the area that um, is seasonally um, usually fairly weak. And so, so again, know your stops, know your risk tolerance. Uh, you know, don't be a hero out there uh, and know your time frame. Hope you all have a great week. Stay safe out there. Bye.